What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is American Abroad here talking today about electric motorcycles. Let's get after it. Absolutely incredible. The real reason for this video is I wanted to go around some news going around in the motorcycle world that is pretty important right now, I think, especially with the evolution of motorcycles and the way that we're going. So of course, electric motorcycles have become a huge uh, topic at the moment, and everybody is wondering, you know, are we gonna make the shift? Uh, the UK has come out saying by 2035 that they are going to stop selling all combustion engines from cars. Of course, they haven't said anything from motorcycles, but you can imagine that motorcycles are next on that list. Now, I personally love motorcycles. I absolutely love having the rumble, and I love having something that's possibly explosive between my legs. I don't know, just the danger, I love it. I love motorcycles, I love the sound, I love the rumble. So, I love having a combustion engine uh, underneath me, and it's, and it's really an incredible feeling, and to be, kind of become one with the machine. I haven't ridden an electric motorcycle, but I'm keen to. Um, of course, having the quick shifter on the BMW has really opened up my mind to having something that doesn't have gears because it is an effortless way of riding and it really just lets you focus on other things besides shifting gears and engine braking as much as like, am I gonna shift down, engine brake harder? You know, if you shift down too much accidentally or up too much, then you don't have the power you need or you, you know, you slam on the engine brake a little bit hard. So yeah, I I'm opening up to it, I really am. But uh, a couple things like the sound, and also the distance that's really doing it in for me. I saw a review online of a guy saying that, you know, it, it's good for him. He has to stop throughout the day and charge a couple times, but at the same time, you do have to have a, a charging station where they're not that readily available as of yet. And two, you know, if you're twisting that throttle a little bit harder, you have to kind of stay consistent on the throttle because if you're, you know, I wanna say revving, but if you're twisting the throttle and really speeding up, overtaking a lot of traffic or doing things like that, hitting corners super hard, um, you are going to get a drain a lot faster on these batteries, which means you're not gonna be able to go as far. Or if you're traveling over, I think, you know, 60 or 70 miles an hour, they start draining, you know, a certain percentage faster than they normally do. So you kinda of have to watch it a little bit closer and there's not as many stations to charge. Something that really piqued my interest and made me want to make this video is BMW is working on an electric boxer engine. Kind of interesting. So I, I found this article and it was just written recently because BMW just patented a, uh, a design for an electric boxer engine. So the concept had a large battery that made up the bulk of the chassis on this electric boxer engine. And it has two cooling elements protruding from either side. So that's where it gets that kind of boxer look and feel to it, as opposed to before, you know, you had the opposing cylinders, which actually had that sideways firing order that gave it that real low down feel when you're riding, which everybody loves. So I guess BMW is really trying to stay true to their heritage here and come out. They did actually release a Vision DC Roadster concept bike. It was not for production, but it was a bike that they produced to kind of, you know, uh, show that they could create a quote unquote boxer style engine in an electric motorcycle. I guess this isn't totally a boxer engine. It just kind of had something that would protrude out on the sides when it started. Uh, kind of a cool looking bike. It's more of a roadster thing, not really an adventure motorcycle. Of course, I would be interested in something more adventure. So let's check it out. Let's see what, what BMW actually plans to do here. You know, throw in the comments. Let me know if it's something you'd actually be interested in. As far as the sound goes, I do find that some of the electric motorcycles I'm seeing online actually sound kind of cool when they're going down the road. You know, they kind of have this futuristic zoom sound, you know, going down the road. So I think that's kind of cool. It's definitely not something that's gonna protect you with other cars or anything. You know, people aren't gonna hear you coming down the road, but you know, so on uh, apparently what they're doing is these uh, new bo quote unquote boxer engine in the electric bike would have uh, these cooling fans or ribs that would come out on the sides and just kind of create this element that would have like that it would have a boxer engine. I don't know if it's going to do anything to actually create that low down weight, but let's see. I would imagine that they would be able to really hone the weight of the motorcycle if they don't have to worry about all these moving parts where you would in a combustion engine. You know, you could really focus on putting everything, all the weight, really low down, and you know create that low down feel we all love with the boxer engine. So even though it may be more aesthetic on the electric bike as far as having the boxer, 
I think they might even be able to do a better job at getting that weight really low down. Of course, something I do love about the gas tank on the GS is it kind of gives you that commanding presence up high and you do have that tank that kind of comes up in front of you. So the cockpit is very comfortable and I kind of like the protection that it also brings, especially on the GSA, the protection that it brings from the weather. So if they kind of keep true to that in their electric bikes, I think it could really be something that's hot that starts coming out. You know, uh, charging these things is way cheaper than gas and especially the way gas is going right now, you know, this is something to consider. So as of right now, we can kind of see that all of the major companies, there are a few companies out there doing some adventure motorcycles. Um, I think that a couple of these companies actually came to Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman uh, when they were planning on doing their long way up journey and they ended up going with Harley Davidson. But something you didn't really see in that adventure ride is it's not really something that's possible and later they even talk about it. Motorcycles, because we wanted to be part of that new wave of, um new wave of transportation, I suppose. Yeah. And uh, it proved to be amazing and quite tricky at the same time. Well, the charging is the issue. The, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the charging's the issue, because there's no... I, I wouldn't even do the trip with an iPhone, uh, well, let alone uh, my vehicle. There's no real infrastructure <clears throat> for charging in the middle of Patagonia, for instance. So yeah. we just, um, we just knock on people's doors and ask if we could plug them in or... Really? Yeah. What would they say? They'd, they usually do. They'd let us. Yeah, That's yeah, nice. yeah. We'd 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 camp in their garden and we'd they'd plug in and sometimes yeah. we'd blow all their because when we had two bikes charging at the same time, sometimes it would blow their fuses, which would be embarrassing. <laughs> so you'd have to go and say, "I'm terribly sorry. I'm terribly sorry." We'd charge one at a time. And <laughs> but people were so generous they and lovely about that. it. Yeah. yeah. Of course, people were telling Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor that they could plug in their bikes. He's a freaking movie star. So. Of course, they are letting this guy charge his bike. The question is, would they let average Joes? Most people are pretty nice, but you can see in this interview that probably the fact that he's a movie star helped out a little bit. And that they didn't really have, uh, you know, this long distance capability on these electric bikes. Yeah, they look cool and maybe they perform, but you know, I think time will still tell how these electric bikes perform over time. But you guys let me know if you're open to this idea. Like, are you thinking electric motorcycles would be the thing going forward? Or do you want to stick with the combustion style engines? You know, I think that definitely we're going to have to be using some variant of the two. Uh, you know, we're going to have to be using a little bit of both in my opinion, because if you kind of just fully switch over your, you know, we don't even have the grids big enough to support everyone driving electric vehicles at the moment. So, you know, we ha we have to do some major changes over the next 10 years if we're going by UK timeline to really do this. But BMW has actually come out and said that they are going to every 18 to 24 months produce a new electric motorcycle. So, you know, right now they've been doing more like scooters and things like that for daily commuters because that's really what they're good for at the moment. You know, you don't really have any long distance capability. So let's check this video out real quick. Charlie Borman talking about some of the difficulties that they faced charging these Harley Davidson electric bikes as they went through South America and North America, but especially in South America. Check it out. If you've got a tank full of petrol in a bike that's roughly this sort of scale and power, yeah. I don't know how far you can go on that. I mean, I don't know. Is it, yeah, is well, it... well, I mean, if you, if you, if you have a, uh, an adventure bike, um, you, you know, you can put enough fuel in it to do, you know, to do, f you know, 500 kilometers. Right. Or, you know, 300 miles. 300, right. Um, and, and so, you know, that gives you whatever's got, whereas this is, you know, with a charge in the middle of the day, uh, you know, you only get a, you know, get 150 miles right. or so out of it. So you have to change. Oh, well, in, in the, if, you, if you, you ride it, charge it, ride it, that's 150 yeah. miles. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, you, so, so what we would do, we would go along. It was, I mean, it was hilarious sometimes because you go along to find some restaurant. So you're, you're not hanging out in petrol stations anymore. No. You're, you're hanging out in, at cafes and restaurants yeah. and, and businesses. If you watch later in the interview, you can also hear him talk about how difficult it was because when they would plug in and normally they had to stop for uh, quite a while, eat lunch or have a snack. And basically sometimes they would plunge the restaurants into darkness because of course the bikes require uh, a lot of energy to be able to charge and so of course everybody's laughing about it but at the same time you know if 
you're an average Joe, you're not an actor, you're not a movie star, you're not somebody famous, people are probably not gonna be too happy about you plunging their restaurant into darkness and them not getting their food on time. So maybe just consider that um, when they make it sound like a big adventure, it probably was for them, but for us, maybe not so much. I know Charlie Borman had kind of discussed at one point it might be nice if they had batteries that you could swap out at gas stations, for instance, or electric stations, where you could just take a battery, your battery out, swap it with a universal battery, put it in your bike fully charged, and go on down the road, and it might even be quicker than filling up your tank with gas. Now, that would require also a huge change in infrastructure and it would require every single motorcycle company that's making electric motorcycles to all kind of come together and create one centralized battery that we're all using. As of yet, hasn't happened. So I'm actually really excited to see what BMW does with this electric boxer engine. Let's see if they even produce a motorcycle. Sometimes these motorcycle uh, manufacturers come out with patents and then you know they just never produce anything or they think that the market has changed and they don't do anything with it. So let's see, I think it's something that's very viable in the future and I would love to ride it and kind of give it a, a go around and see how it goes. All right guys, so throw your opinion down in the comments below. Do you actually think that this is a viable option? Is it something you're interested in the future? Um, you know, I know a lot of us really, really love the way motorcycles are at the moment. So let's see how it goes. I, I don't even know if, if anybody out there has really produced an adventure motorcycle electric that I'm super interested in. But if you have anything, any recommendations, throw them in the comments below. I'd love to check them out. You guys are always a great source of knowledge for me. So thanks so much for leaning into these videos. And hey, if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It all helps the metrics and it helps me be able to know that you guys like what I'm creating and makes me want to put out more and better uh, content for you guys. We'll catch you guys later. Ride safe and we'll see you on the pavement.